Hey guys, let's dive into some unknown JavaScript tricks. Pretty JSON printing. You may know about the JSON.stringify, which takes a JavaScript object as a param and produces a JSON string. While this is a valid JSON, it is not well formatted. If you want a pretty looking JSON, you can pass a third param to indicate the amount of space to format the JSON with. A quick note here guys, the second param is an optional replacer function to include or exclude properties from the JSON. Dive into description to know more about it. The next is freezing object. In JavaScript, freezing objects is a way to prevent someone from modifying the properties of an object. The way we do this is using the object.freeze method. Just simply pass the object you want to freeze as an argument. Once you have frozen an object, adding properties or changing the value of the existing properties will not work. Will not work as in, if you are in normal JavaScript mode, it will silently fail. Here we can see that the property A has not been updated and property B is also not added. If I switch over to strict mode by adding use strict at the top of the script, this will throw an error. So where this is useful, if you are creating a library that the other people will use and you don't want the users to mess with your library object, you can definitely use this. Once an object is frozen, it cannot be unfrozen. A quick note for you, this is different than using const to declare your object. Even if you use the const declaration, you will be able to modify the properties of an object. That is, here I cannot assign a different value to the variable obj. This will throw a reference error. The object reference is the only constant in this case. The next is switch statement hack. Unlike other languages, JavaScript allows using switch on booleans. This allows us to have syntaxes like this. This makes some functions really clean instead of having multiple if else statements. We are just checking which of the multiple condition is true and returning the corresponding constant. However, some people may find the syntax a little confusing and this is very controversial. Make sure to check with your team to decide whether you can actually use this syntax. And by the way, if you liked the video so far, a like and sub to the channel would be amazing. And moving on to the next, BigInt. BigInt is a built-in data type from JavaScript, which allows us to work with any arbitrarily large number with exact accuracy. With a normal number type, once you get beyond a certain point, you start to lose precision. Since JavaScript internally stores only an approximation of the number for efficiency. There are several ways to create big integers. Number one, type any arbitrarily large number and end it with a small n to denote it's a big int. Number two, convert a normal number to a big int by using the big int typecast. Do not use the new operator here. And number three, or to convert a string which contains only numerical digits, use the big int typecast. Mathematical operations can be performed only between big int. That is, you cannot add a normal number to a big int. But comparison is allowed between big ints and normal numbers. And the next, passing wrapper functions to higher order functions. Wrapper functions like number, string, boolean, or starting here with the uppercase are generally used for typecasting. If I have a string 12 and want to convert it to a number, I can simply call number 12. But what many don't know is that these just behave just like normal functions and can also be passed to array functions like map and filter. For example, if I have an array full of strings and I want to convert each of them to a number, we can simply call array.map of number. Let's have an another example. If we want to filter out all the falsy values from an array, in JavaScript, Falsy values are those when you convert them to a boolean, it returns false. This includes the value false, null, undefined, zero, nan, and empty strings. So to filter out all the falsy values, we can use the following method. Array.filter of boolean. When boolean function is executed, falsy value return false, so the resultant array will not contain any falsy values. In this result, we can see that all the falsy values have been removed. And moving on to the next, passing values from array as arguments. 
for functions that expect a list of values such as this test function. If you have the values in an array, you can use the spread syntax to pass the value from the array as arguments. Here we can see that the values 1, 2 and 3 are assigned to the variables a, b and c respectively. A classic use case for this is to find the maximum or minimum value in an array. We have built-in methods called math.max and math.min, but both of these accept a list of arguments and not an array. So to find the maximum or minimum from an array, we can use the spread syntax like this. And that's it guys. Check out more videos from us. This is Varshni and you are watching the Zeta Byte Studio. Thanks for watching and we will catch you in the next video.